Hi, this is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft back again. What I wanted to do today is uh, I've got a couple projects I'm working on here and I need to lash up some tripods. I've got to do several of them in a row and I just thought this would be a good opportunity to make a quick video on the process itself. Uh, if you see, you see in the background a lot of my videos, a lot of things I'm going to be doing is going to incorporate uh, tripods. Uh, it's a good way for me to uh, get up quick structures quick. I'll use them as, uh, as like saw horses if I'm doing a couple long series of cuts uh, over and over again. Um, I've also used them with like a split log as kind of like a chopping block, a portable, you know, tabletop to work on. I've used them for, for cooking, obviously. Uh, that's the classic uh, hang a pot over a campfire on a wooden tripod um, picture that everybody sees. Uh, also, I've used them uh, as a series to make a, a set of bunk beds. Uh, use them for a kitchen that I've got set up over here. So you're going to see all kinds of tripods in use. Uh, this is just the way I do it. Start off, I've got my bases of these poles all about the same length. Uh, it's going to be just off camera frame, but you can figure that part out. And I've got tripods here that's probably about four years old and still going strong with regular number 36 tarred bank line. Stuff just holds up real well. As long as you torque them down nice and solid, they really don't go anywhere. So standard for me is about uh, two full pulls. So this is one, this is two. And what that actually does is that gives me enough length to come down off, a, off the tripod and, uh, and hang a pot. So it depends on the size uh, sticks that you're dealing with and how far you like to have them hang down. Uh, it, so it will depend on how much line you're actually going to use. So normally when I get them all lined up, I come down about six, eight inches and I'm going to start this off with a clove hitch and I'm going to go three wraps around the pole and then between the poles themselves I'm going to cut through each one three times and that's actually called a frap. When you actually put the fraps in and torque down on it that's what really makes a tripod strong. As you're doing it you can just really wrench on those things and just feel the whole structure tighten up. I'm going to give you... Alright so this is the first pole I'm going to put the clove hitch on there's a couple different ways you can do this. I'm going down about eight inches from the top, and this is about my shortest stick. Uh, I usually go with a clove hitch. So for a clove hitch, I'm going to come under and over, and I'm going to create an X. The line's going to come under, go through the X, and tighten down. What that's going to do is secure the line to one pole, that way I can pull it to the rest. Another way to do it is with a timber hitch. Timber hitch, you're going to cross under and then go again one. And that's the same kind of concept. That'll keep it from slipping through. All right, so I got my poles as straight as they're going to lay. Uh, this is a timber hitch on here. It doesn't really matter. That's just what last one I tied, so that's what I'm going to leave it in. So I'm going to wrap around it once. twice, three times, and neatness does count, so you don't want to have any gaps, you want it nice and solid. Ok, 
Okay, now on the first pole, I'm going to go between pole number one and pole number two. So any way you can, get the line through there. Okay. Now in this case, I'm going to use the, the roll itself, which is not tied to anything right now. I'm just going to wrap it around there a few times and let me pull on it. You could use a stick. You could use, uh, you know, your Leatherman. You could use a sheath knife. You could use your saw. You could use anything. But that happens to be the, the best thing I got available right now. Okay, I'm really wrenching down on that and it is really tightening up. So this is two over the top. And back again. Here it comes. There we go. There's three. Now I'm crossing over number two, and I'm coming up in the gap between pole two and pole three now. So I've got three wraps around, I got three fraps between pole one and two. I'm actually going to go around there, complete one full time, one full wrap. If you've got to spread your poles out a little bit on the ground, behind you. That's fine. Okay. <clears throat> this is two. This is my third and final frap. I'm gonna wrap this around my roll of line that I'm using as a toggle. And I'm really pulling on that. Okay, and everything seems to be nice and neat and dressed. Now I'm gonna go on the top of pole number three. I'm gonna do that clove hitch that I showed at the, the first angle. So I'm gonna go over the top and the front. Make an X, come under the bottom, go through the X, and then dress the knots. There we go. Finish that off with a clove hitch. Now I can put a just a security knot in here so it doesn't slip through. That's how it looks. Everything's nice and tight. These sticks are really cinched in there tight. This setup is gonna be like this until these sticks rot. All right, so now that I've got the, the, the lashing completed, I'm going to basically give myself an X in the holes themselves. Now I have an adjustable completed tripod. Uh, the key to this is that the lashings themselves aren't holding the main structure up. I do have an X formed here and I've got one on top. You can do it backwards where the sticks aren't actually crossed, it's the lashing holding everything up. That's not the proper way to hang it. When you do it like this, uh, the line is actually keeping the sticks from separating. They're not holding the weight. This was the two pulls, and this is my length for uh, hanging a pot or whatever. Just gonna tie my saw on real quick. 
because I'm in the middle of a field with no extra sticks around. This is just a simple slow pitch. Now with my bag, I can go through the loop just like this I would if this is a pot or if this is wet weather and I wanted to get my bag up off the ground, I could do the same thing with a stick. It's adjustable by moving the legs around. So it's adjustable for height and also say I've got a long fire and I'm cooking over coals and over flame. I decide to switch from boiling the water just keeping it warm. So I want to shift over over to the cooler coals instead of the hot flame. I can shift everything left or right also. Also I have the ability to skin game on this just depending on how high it is. Got a couple different ways I can shorten it, but the easiest one is just wrapping it around. Now, if I was working on uh, squirrels or uh, skinning a muskrat or mink, I could do that up higher. Uh, if I needed to work at a seated position, I could just either unwrap the line like I just had it before or walk the tripod out. The strength on the tripod is only dictated by the size of your sticks. This is kind of a, a dead wood. It's what I had to deal with without harvesting any additional trees off the property. So that's what I'm using. This is gonna be fine for my application. You know, if you use it, you know, arm size, solid sticks, you can have you know, thousand pounds on a tripod, no problem at all. All right, you will be seeing a lot more of these tripods in the future. I've got a lot to tie up here, so let me get at it. I just wanted to show you real quick how I did it. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. This is the way that works for me. So once again, uh, Jamie Boggs, Burning River Bushcraft. I'll see you guys soon.